Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So it's been quite some time since I've actually uploaded or even looked at some drone components because I've been busy behind the scenes and we'll get into that later on. So first of all, what I have just noticed is GEPRC just released their own GoPro Hero 8. It's actually a GoPro Hero 8 that's stripped down and fit into a naked GoPro mount. Now they're selling them as is like that, which is really nice. And I don't know why it took so long for somebody to actually do that. Um, now, I don't know about the warranty of such a thing, but at least the warranty that it's working out of the box would be great. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see. So you're basically getting here a GoPro Hero 8 that's stripped down in a naked GoPro mount, which is kind of nice, actually. And even I think comes with a battery. So as far as I can tell, it's not coming with a battery, but you can connect the power uh, from the thing. You have the record. Which is, it's really nice, actually. I really like this. So here we go. Uh, the yellow is for the recording, connecting with LED pad on the FC. So you have to do some sort of a control for that, or the auxiliary output for that. And it takes two to six S input. So it seems as if it has some sort of a voltage regulator in the board they're using to give the power to the GoPro because the GoPro, I think, takes, I think, like 3.8 to like three something volts or probably 2.8 volts. Basically, the battery, which is a lithium, and it's usually a 1S as far as I believe. And um, yeah, you can see here's the board here. That's kind of nice. So this is actually pretty good. Now, I don't know if they've been selling this for quite some time. It's really, you know, to, it's really good to make sure that these boards are pretty reliable, actually, before you purchase it. Um, could save you a ton of uh, headaches, actually. Next down the line, which I found really strange because I thought DYS was actually closing up and um, and maybe for a good reason. And uh, but <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, the previous SunFun, the last pair of SunFun motors I got, I got roughly like 18 of them, different KVs and everything. And about 10% were just dead on arrival. And I've never had that happen to me with a Racer Star motor, which, you know, came, it, it was just not good. And I just didn't make a video about them. And I, I just didn't want to say anything about them until I got some replacement and figure out what the hell is going on. And then over the time pass, I completely forgot. And I just remembered right now. Now... This is 2203-3000 KV. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're good. I'm just saying be careful. That's all I'm saying here. Uh, if anybody has used them, let us know down in the comment section. And again, everything here is linked down below in the order we check them out. Now here, I just wanted to look at this. This is the iFlight Taurus. Hopefully I'm saying it right. It's an 8-inch quadcopter, FPV quadcopter, that takes 8 motors and carries a big fat camera, or a big ass camera to be exact. Um... And it might be useful for some people out there. Currently not myself, and uh, I don't know when I will be uh, needing one of those. Now, next down the line is Diatone Roma. I thought it looked nice, but when I scrolled down, it just looks meh, average. Nothing too special as far as I believe. It has a lot of good mounting solutions, uh, 20 by 20, 30 by 30, and I think it has a double stack. You can see back here. I think this will allow you to have maybe 30 by 30. No, I don't think so. Let's just double check, actually. Before I say anything because what it seems is it takes one stack in the back and you can actually move it back and forth I'm guessing it's probably 20 by 20 so you could fit a Cadex Vista in the back not really saying much here and um, yeah if anybody used it let us know down in the comment section let's go ahead and check out the next one so what we have here is Flywoo Nin Motors now I Flywoo Motors have never ever disappointed me either in looks or in performance or so far in durability but you know, the, everybody has a different experience. And also, if you have a different experience, let us know down in the comment section. But I guarantee you about 95% of the community would speak very highly of actually Flywoo stuff, even though they started at such a no-name brand. Like, they were so tiny. And when I was seeing their flight controllers back then when they first started to release stuff, it, it looked like a clone of a Hollybro ESC. And Hollybro was the best shit back in the day. And all of a sudden, just Flywoo just jumped on top. I have no idea how just overnight they just released good products after good products after good products. And now they are where they are at. And they totally deserve it. At least as of right now. I haven't seen anything bad from their end. And uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section as well. It'll really benefit the community. So, yeah, these should be pretty interesting. Uh, we have 2203.5, 1700 KV or 1750, which is a 5 to 6S, and 3000 KV. I still haven't played around much with this size, so I still don't understand the dynamics of, and I would really like to test and, and understand how they perform and what kind of efficiency are we looking at and what's the overall best setup for us or a 6S and what kind of, uh, what is it, a propeller. 
So yeah, I'll have a closer look at that later on. But yeah, again, this is linked down below. If anybody uses it, let us know down in the comment section. This one was pretty interesting due to the fact that it's purple and that's about it and really tiny. So it's actually, it's not really tiny. It's just 20 by 20 here, no labels. It's an F7 and it's a second generation. Wow. <laughs> so it's an F722 mini. Um, what else do we have here? Anything special? DJI FAV air unit for RC. Yeah, okay. So this uh, is it's just a flight controller basically. F7 MPU 6000 has a barometer, OSD, no black box, six UARTs as far as I believe, and ESC software, DSHOT 300, 600, I've never seen that, but I'm, I'm guessing the ESC protocol, that's what they probably meant there, telemetry, power, LED, yeah, just basic stuff, 2 to 6S voltage, TVS protection, really nice, Diatone, I really like that on their flight controllers, oh, look at this, we also have a 9 volt, huge plus for me, how much does this cost, a little bit on the expensive side, um, yeah, this one, finally, they just released the frame. It's basically a quadcopter that you could plug motors and a flight controller inside and it has a ball around it. I don't know the durability of that ball, but I really want to get my hands on it. Uh, you could fit it. What is it? 122 millimeter wheelbase frame kit. So it, the whole ball is a 230 millimeter circle, I guess. And or or we could say yeah yeah basically 233 millimeter circle and the 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 quadcopter inside that would fit I think it's a three inch 122 millimeters and maybe we have some stuff three inch there we go so this is a three inch uh, frame kit and parts not included obviously it's just the frame kit here with the plastic stuff hopefully let's just double check that and yeah it's just the frame kit here with that ball really nice kind of expensive I don't think it should cost that much. Um, low, knowing LDARC doesn't make the most premium components, but it is the only one in the market, so they could basically ask for whatever the hell they want. Next down the line is the Diatona, Diet, so Diatona, Diatone Roma F4 LR Micro Long Range 4S. So, um, again, as the name states it, it's a long range and it's a 4S. And uh, this is, I guess, the new trend here. Now, they're nice because they fly for so long. But it's very difficult to really enjoy the, you know, the acrobatic maneuvers. I don't think anybody has created a good one. And you can tell these are not really meant for it. You have your GPS. You have a lot of heavy components on there. But it is really nice and pretty interesting as well. Hopefully they have some sort of a carbon fiber brace between the arms, kind of like what uh, uh, Flywo did. I think it was Flywo. Yeah, Flywo. Let's go ahead and take a look at that last one. This one just looked really nice. And it reminded me of the Flywoo one as well. This is from iFlight. It's called the Mach R5. Comes 4S and 6S. This is the 6S variant here, HD. Um, this is just basically kind of like a racer. And you could do freestyle with it. And there's no problem with that. But it's going to be an absolute screamer here. 2506 motors, 1850 kV. 55 amp ESCs. Ah, I wonder what ESCs it's actually using. Is it really using that? No, it's not. No way in hell. No way in hell it's using that. Oh my god, it is. It's actually using the all-in-one. Whoa. That's crazy. Are those really that good? I haven't tested one of those really. Well, that's interesting. They're using the all-in-one board. Don't know how that'll play out. The price is acceptable, honestly, for what you're getting. I mean, this is a typical price, but... If you build one, you would get one around this range as well. Uh, knowing Flywoo, it's good. The all-in-one, pretty interesting. Don't know how long it'll last. Uh, I haven't tested it personally, so I can't say anything about it. If anybody has, let us know down in the comment section on how reliable that thing is. And, well, that's really it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be uploading more often. Uh, not so much, but I'll be uploading at least three times a week now and I'll try to have more quality videos up uh, Than just a bunch of just you know review videos. I'll try to compile a couple things together uh, Before I release a video. I'll do my best to do that and um, Yeah, everything's linked down below if you can check those out was greatly support the channel And if you guys are interested on what has been going on behind the scenes Let me know and I'll fill you guys in either here or on patreon and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace